And the first talk is by Jürgen Giesel. He'll be presenting the results of the termination competition. Thank you. So yes, I'm presenting the result of the termination and complexity competition as uh, one of the representatives of the steering committee of the competition. So this is an annual competition that takes place since 2004 and it runs on star exec like many other competitions as well. There were some technical problems this year, uh, also in earlier years, but uh, luckily they were fixed in the last moment by Aaron Stump and his team and also by some people from the termination community. So all the tools could run as, uh, as planned. The competition is organized by Akihisa Yamada. So big thanks to him for all the work that he did. And in particular, he wrote a new web front end to display the competition results in a nice way. And uh, in this time, uh, registration of the tools was via uh, GitHub pull requests instead of sending emails. So this was new from an organizational point of view. And of course, this uh, eased the organization a little bit. The examples that the tools run on are the so-called termination problem database. So that's a large collection of problems where termination has to be proved or complexity has to be analyzed. And everybody can submit new problems. Now this year, there were not too many new problems. One term write system, seven C programs, and several integer transition systems. And since there are so few new problems, let me show you one of them. So the term write system that is new is a very small one, it's this one. This is due to Larry Paulson. It's a stack-based variant of the Ackermann function encoded by uh, René Thiemann as a terminal system. And although this is a very tiny system, no tool could prove termination. So this shows that even if the system is small, termination can still be tricky. And in particular, it shows that everybody is highly invited to submit new problems. Also people who are not participating with their own tool. But if you encounter any problem where you think, well, let's see whether termination tools can handle this, then just submit it. And then the tools have to solve this in the next competition. So uh, for every example, the tools have a 300 second timeout. And this time we had a two phase submission of tools. So there was a first submission deadline. And the idea was that in this way, one can find out whether there are technical problems and also detect possible bugs. Now it turned out there was only one conflict after the first submission. So a conflict is an example where one tool says yes and one tool says no. And that shows that at least one of the tools must have a bug, but still there were several resubmissions because of conflicts. So several bug fixes took place before the second deadline. But this is a good idea, I think, because, uh, well, this makes sure that the competition is not dominated by technical problems in the end. Now, the competition has several categories and they can be grouped into three groups, termination of term rewriting and variants of term rewriting, termination of programs and complexity analysis. So let me go through this one by one. So for termination of term rewriting, these were the tools that were participating. So I always put the name of the tool in red, except for CETA, I put that in blue for a reason, because CETA is not a termination prover, but it's a certifier. So the idea is that you shouldn't trust the termination provers too much. And therefore, uh, it's a good idea to check their proofs and make sure they are really sound. And that's what CETA does. So CETA is based on Isabel and therefore it has a high level of trust and checks these machine generated proofs. So let's look at the categories uh, one after another. So the, the first category I want to look at is standard term rewriting and the tools can either say yes or no, or they don't say anything sensible like maybe or timeout. And these were the results this year. So uh, this tells you that a proof said yes 2,033 times, not said yes 864 times and so on. And the overall score is the addition of the yes and no answers. So this gives a total score and uh, well, this shows who the winner is. And I will also try to highlight what is remarkable maybe. So what is remarkable here is that TTT2 overtook NUT for the first time. So NUT uh, appeared in 2014. And since then it was always number two in this category. And now TTT uh, managed to solve five more examples than NUT. So uh, I don't know why, but at least it is uh, number two now. Um, there are many other categories for different variants of term rewriting. And these are the results. So you see that there are different tools. Uh, sometimes the one tool gets number one, sometimes the other gets number one. This is mu term where we had the system description of mu term yesterday at Ichkar. And uh, moreover, apart from term rewriting, we also have categories on string rewriting. 
Now, string rewriting is a subclass of term rewriting where all function symbols have arity one. So a term of, these, uh, of this form is just a string of function symbols. And here the results are the following ones. So you see that sometimes the winner for yes is not the same as the winner for no. But then since we add up the scores in this example, matchbox is the overall winner and multi non multa is, uh, gets second place. Um, now, uh, in, I, I wanted to highlight when there's something uh, new or remarkable about the tools. So uh, Matchbox and Multum non Multa, they didn't integrate new techniques, but they integrated new combinations of proof methods. And for that reason, there are more yes answers than ever before in string rewriting and also more no answers than ever before. There's also a variant of string rewriting, relative string rewriting, and here the results are pretty similar. Now I said, uh, we also want to certify termination proofs. So the numbers that I showed you up to now, this is without certification, but several of these categories can be certified. And uh, if you want to certify the proofs, then you get these blue results. So we took CETA, the tool uh, developed by René Thiemann and his colleagues in Innsbruck. And this, for example, means that, well, a proof could prove 1,311 examples and 1,223 examples of these proofs, they could be certified. So they are certified to be correct. And well, you can see that uh, similar uh, numbers are obtained for the other tools. Now here, the new thing is that CETA supports more techniques now. CETA supports the weighted path ordering and max polynomial interpretations as uh, René Thiemann pointed out in his invited talk at the beginning of the conference. And the effect of that is that the tool NUT can now be certified as well. So for the first time, NUT also has uh, certified results. And you can see this by these blue numbers in, in the NUT rows. Now for stringy writing, of course, certification is also possible in principle, but you see that the outputs of Matchbox and Multum Non Multa, so the most powerful tools here, their output cannot be certified yet. And the reason is that there are several stringy write techniques that are not yet certifiable by CETA. So this is something that one could work at in the uh, work on the future to make sure that uh, also these most powerful tools in these uh, categories become certifiable. So this is what I wanted to present about term rewriting. Now, termination of programs. These are the competitors that uh, participated. And there is one new entrant here, the tool LOAD entered the competition as a standalone tool for the first time. So this used to be a sub proof system of a proof, but Florian Frohn moved to Saarbrücken to MPI and continued developing LOAD. And he now entered the tool as a standalone tool for proving non-termination. And you will see how it performed in a minute. So the categories that we had here were uh, C programs then a restriction of C programs where you only have integers and no pointers, integer transition systems. So these are essentially just programs on integers. Uh, this is a mixture of integers and term rewriting and logic programming. And these are the results. So you see that in several categories, the winner for yes is different from the winner for no. Um, now, what is remarkable? Remarkable is that for integer transition systems, we again have an all time high, both for yes and for no. So there were never so many yes answers and there were never so many no answers here. So that's good. Um, the new entrant tool, LOAD, uh, was the most powerful tool for no in this category. And it works in a completely different way than the other tools because it's based on loop acceleration. And that's a new variant of loop acceleration that Florian presented uh, in his ETAPS talk this week, which ran in parallel to Ichgar and FSCD. Um, another important remark here is um, there are more programming languages than just C and logic programming and, uh, well, programs that run on integers. So for example, we had also competitions on Java and there are also tools that analyze Haskell, but unfortunately there was only one participant in these categories. So if you have a tool that can analyze any other programming language, please consider participating because then we can have a sensible competition in these categories as well. So categories where there's only one participant, they are still run, but they count as demonstration categories because it doesn't make sense to speak of a winner here. So the results for these categories, they are on the website, but I won't present them here because they are not so interesting from a competition point of view. Now let's move on to complexity analysis. Now, unfortunately this time only two tools participated here namely a proof in TCT. And 
there was a competition only for complexity of term rewriting. So I will say a, a bit more about this in a minute. Um, for term rewriting, there are two different forms of complexity that you can analyze, runtime complexity and derivational complexity. And moreover, you can analyze either full rewriting or just innermost rewriting. The difference between runtime and derivational complexity is the following. For runtime complexity, you only analyze evaluations that start with, well, some algorithm applied to data objects. So that's like complexity in programs. Whereas for derivational complexity, you analyze any form of evaluation that may start with any possible term. And the results are as follows. Now, what is remarkable about this? Well, first of all, I should mention that for termination, one just counts the number of yes and no answers, and that gives the score. For complexity, it's a bit more complicated because the tools can compute both upper and lower bounds. So it's not a yes and no question, but the tools may say O of n, O of n square, O of n cube, and so on. And this is rewarded. The more precise the answer is, the more points the tool gets both for upper and lower bounds. So it's a bit complicated how to compute these scores. Now, what is remarkable, remarkable is that uh, a proof used to participate only for runtime complexity. So a proof cannot compute derivational complexity, or at least it couldn't do that until now, but Carsten Fuss developed a transformation from derivational to runtime complexity at uh, Frocos last year. And he also presented this at the IFIB workshop at this conference. And this allows us, uh, approved to use its runtime complexity machinery to analyze also derivational complexity. So this is new in, in this competition. Um, there's also certification possible for complexity analysis. And these are the numbers where CETA can certify that the proof is indeed correct. Well, here you can see that at least for runtime complexity, there is still room for improvement. So certification uh, could be improved further or the tools could output certi certifiable proofs uh, for more examples. Now, again, here more participants would be uh, urgently needed because there are also categories for complexity of programming languages, in particular also for complexity of integer transition systems. But this year there was only one participant. And so this was again, a demonstration category and not a competition uh, category. So if you develop a tool that does that, then please consider participating. So let me summarize. There were many powerful tools. Uh, the numbers are higher than ever before for many categories. Um, you should dare to participate even if you have uh, a new tool because newcomers can win categories or subcategories like LOAD, which was the most powerful tool for disproving termination of integer transition systems. Certification gets more and more powerful every year, but of course there's still room for improvement. Then a big thank you to Akehiza for running the competition and doing all the hard work. And uh, well, this is again, this commercial, please participate if you work on termination or complexity analysis. And if you don't work on that, then still you're very welcome to submit new problems and uh, pose no new challenges to all the tools. And if you want more information, this is all available, available on this website. So thank you. Great, uh, thanks for the... Uh talk. Um, so I believe we have one uh, question on the chat. Um, can we promote? Uh, okay, I, I can read the question. Should I should I read the question? Oh, uh, yeah, so I promote it. So, so the, the question is, uh, why did approve not participate in integer transition systems? That's surprising since uh, it has ITS as a, a backend. That's true. But uh, the ITS backend that Approve has is uh, particularly tailored to handle those integer transition systems that uh, result from the transformation of programs. So the problem is that when you analyze uh, ITSs, you typically have a start state and you only analyze evaluations that begin in the start state. And a proof doesn't do that. A proof tries to prove that all evaluations are finite, no matter in which state you start. That's not a big drawback if you transform, if you got these ITSs by transformations, because these transformations take the start states into account. But if you start with an ITS right away, then uh, these kinds of termination techniques are uh, not really powerful. So it makes no, no big sense to participate. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. 
So I had maybe one other question about uh, certification. So um, these solvers all produce proofs. Uh, do they produce them in the same format? And what is this format? Yes, there, there is a format called CPF. And that's an, for a format for proof exchange that was developed by not only the CETA group, but uh, a group of, of three certifiers that uh, are available, available to certify termination proofs. And so this is a joint format that all the provers use in order to make the proofs uh, machine readable for the certifiers. Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. So a lot of other competitions uh, are kind of struggling to settle on proof format. So it's... Uh... Yeah. Nice that you guys have worked this out for termination. Um, any other uh, questions? So yeah, let's thank the speaker. Um, <laughs> <laughs>